Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anime Orange, and welcome to another Iconics build video. Today we are going to start working on the Western Star, the 4900 SB log truck and trailer. This is an Iconics build, I believe you can also get the Western Star 4900 SB truck by itself. Kind of get the impression it's the same build, not really sure, haven't done it yet, but we are going to start off building this Iconics version, and I'm going to tell you, I've already got started on this in reality. This is a long build, so this is going to end up being at least a three-part video, two parts just for the truck alone. Let's go to the table real quick before we do, actually, if you look on the back on the scale here, this thing is pretty much on the hard side. It is a challenging model. It is not overly difficult i'd say it's challenging let's go to the table open it up see what's all inside go over the instructions some tools and start putting this thing together we have the western star 4900 log truck and trailer here this is a bit of a heavy package i'm interested to open it up unfortunately i don't have this one may actually need a pair of scissors because this is kind of thicker Fortunately, I have a pair of scissors nearby. Looks like they could use a little bit of cleaning then. Check it out. I'm actually cutting a model open. Don't have the Iconics for or Metal Earth version, non-Iconics to compare this to, but I feel like there's probably a lot of similarities. But here we have inside, they've got one sheet, one Iconics size sheet, two Iconics size sheet with a protective piece of paper and three Iconics size sheets lots of little parts and then we have two pieces of paper for the instructions oh excuse me three pieces of paper I think this one is going to take a while we're going to start look at the first sheet four of course that's four let me try again how many pieces of paper do we have here we actually have four pieces of paper. Again though, I'm going to start with the first page. I know this is the first one because it has the Iconics and Metal Earth logo on it. That should be page number one. Unfold this. And we have a fairly big piece of paper that's bigger than the screen. I'm going to focus on what I'm guessing is page one here. It's, yeah, page one. It's not numbered, but the next one is page two. Gonna go over this fairly briefly. If you've never seen one of these Metal Earth models before, if you've never seen one of these before though, I suggest maybe you wanna try something a little simpler to get you started. But anyway, we'll go over this rather briefly. Iconics and Metal Earth logos at the top of page one, a line drawing of the model and one of the sheets. We've got a 360 code here, QR code or website where you can use that to get to a 360 view of the finished model for reference sake. We have a sample part here with a note about insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Insertion tabs go into insertion holes. That's mostly how these models are held together. Fold lines are pre-scored areas where part folds or bends or curves. We have a legend. Legend, in, at the top you have the E, which is pointing at the engraved side of a part. Usually the detailed engraving, because sometimes the engraving can be um, um, fold lines. You have any points at the non-engraved side, which may have fold lines on it, but it's not considered the engraved side, usually. The attention point is usually trying to get your attention to pay attention to how something is aligned so that the parts come together correctly. Sometimes there's notation with it, but I haven't seen that very often. Blue circle and green triangle. These have been around for a while. Blue circle means to insert a tab in its slot, fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means insert a tab and twist it 90 degrees. Folded ones are cleaner looking. Try, uh, twisted ones are more secure. We have an assembly tip when you're twisting a tab. Pull and twist makes for a tighter connection. Notation over here about some tools. We'll talk about tools here in just a moment. But below that, we start the assembly flow chart for the log truck. And it looks like, kind of looks like this is going to go, I wonder if this, yeah, this might, it's looking like this might go kind of like the train set did where there's a set of instructions for the truck and maybe a separate set of instructions for the trailer. But basically, actually before we cover this, this is slightly out of order, I'm gonna go over to this page 
that has the metal sheets because this is important. Here we have an outline of the three different metal sheets. I'm going to grab one for reference sake. Looks like I've got the one with all the tires and wheels on it. So we've got this sheet here. This is it. You see surrounding this are all the numbers pointing at the parts. You also see that it is labeled B. Each sheet has its own label, C, B, and of course up top, I've covered up A, the bottom here. They've started doing this fairly recently, which allows you to easily or more easily find the part, especially since we have, looks like, well over 100 parts here. But this tells you where the parts are, lets you, helps you to find them. You find the number, you find, look, follow the arrow, points to the part. You will, however, notice that a lot of these parts are colored in. Parts that are colored the same color are the same part. We have, unfortunately, two different shades, two or three different shades of blue here, which are going to be difficult for me because I'm not really good with shades. But the ones that are the same shade of blue are the same part. They've labeled one like 86 is here. This also looks like 86. And that, I think, is also 86. There's a lot of duplicate parts in this because symmetry in models, because there's tires. So, they, so that they don't crowd it up with a bunch of numbers, they've colored in like parts. I like that they do that. We're moving back over to the assembly flow chart. You see we start at part one, which is on sheet A. There's a part, it's folded like this. You come over here, you add in this part, which appears to be part two, on sheet A, which is folded this way. Those two come together with the twisted tabs. You end up with this, you add in part three, which is folded like this. So these are like, these little boxed areas are like sub-assemblies. Come over here, this, tab is folded over so these two ends connect. Come over here, you add in part four, which is on sheet A. There's that sub-assembly of how to shape it. Comes in here, that folds down. Come over here, we add in part B on sheet five. Come over here, once that's added, you have the left side. Down below, you repeat a similar process for the right side. And that's the gist of the assembly flow chart. Once you get to this, we skip to this page, but this is full of the assembly flow chart, so I'm guessing we go to page three, pick up a part eight, and just follow through, completing all of the steps and putting parts together. And then once you get to page nine, you will finish up the assembly of the log truck. It appears that on page 10, you start the assembly flow chart for the long log trailer, which again uses the same sheets that you've already been using all along. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces. And then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. For shaping a lot of curves and dome shapes and whatnot, you'll see me use an array of 3D printed tools that I've designed that you can find on my Etsy if you're interested. Otherwise, I've, you'll also see me pull out a cheap drill bit set that I have that's not sharp for shaping cylinder shapes, or just look around your house and use objects that you find, like dowel rods, pencils, maybe some beads to shape certain things. We've talked a little bit about some tools. We've got our instructions and metal sheets at the ready. You know, when I was originally showing these, I wasn't really showing the colored side. You see there's quite a bit of color in there. We've got tools at the ready. Let's start putting this thing together. It was quickly apparent that this model has lots of detail. With all the small round parts, I went straight to the drill bits for shaping things. I also closed up part one when the instructions say not to. 
that will make it more difficult to twist the tabs, but there is the option of folded tabs, which worked out well enough. You might have noticed that there are numbers on the parts. These numbers help you to line things up properly. Be sure to line up the numbers like what is shown in the assembly flowchart. The instructions indicate the engraved side of part 5 goes on the inside when curved. In this case, it looks like the non-engraved side is the side with the fold lines. Translation, put the smooth silver side on the outside when you curve part 5. That was the left side and this is the right side and for the right side I decided not to close up the part 6 so that I can get to the tabs inside and twist them. However, I decided not to twist the tabs inside but fold them. If I twist them, I cannot use the drill bit to keep that cylinder shape when I close up this part.
Having just finished the Freightliner dump truck, I know just how to shape the little curves in the hood. Grab it with some pliers, bend a little, move out, bend a little, move out, and bend a little.
Part 17 and 18 have sections that have to be folded over. These sections are thin and easy to warp. Take care to bend carefully. I bent as much as I could, then switched to pinching the two halves together. Folding that in half didn't go as well as before. And folding this part in half didn't go smoothly either, but with some work, I straightened it out and tried again.
I almost missed putting the seats in. I didn't see them in the steps before folding in the bottom parts, but I knew the seats probably went around this point, so I double checked and saw them. Bending tabs is getting increasingly difficult because of how delicate some of these connections are. I put the first of these lights, parts 28, on after completely shaping it. To make things a little easier, I left the front flap open on the following ones, and then once attached, folded that front flap down. For parts 29, the front is shaped into a box, but the sides are very thin. To get the sides that connect it to the rest of the part bent over, I had to hold that side with the flat nose pliers and bend the rest of the light over. I also used the flat nose pliers to hold the stem while I bent the sides with the tabs over.
I've tried not to fiddle with these antenna if I don't have to, opting to wait until the end to straighten them. But I needed to move them out of the way here. This model has so much to shape and work with that I had to take the occasional break just to clean up my work area and reorganize my drill bits. Part 31 folds up into a small square, which is too small for my tools, but I have developed a trick. Fold the center fold just a little to sort of break the rigidity of it, then fold the outer sections to 90 degrees or close to. Then if done right, you can just pinch the outer corners and squish the center bend right into shape. You may need a few carefully calculated shaping squeezes with the tweezers.
I didn't like how much this one smokestack was wobbling, so I tried to tighten it up. And that brings us to the end of part one of this truck build. We've got pretty much the front end and cab together. We still got to work on the frame. There's some other things to be added on. There's the arm on the back and the wheels. So there's still quite a bit more to go. We'll pick up in part two on that. And then after that, we will start working on the trailer itself. So far, this has been a very interesting build full of detail and lots of little things to shape but it hasn't been frustrating at all. It has been rewarding and fun, and I've really enjoyed the challenge. Catch me in part two, where we keep going. As always, thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.